Hey, this is Superfizz. Um, I'd like to make a tutorial to install the Prismatic Labs um, Ethereum 2 Beacon Chain and Test and Validator Client, um, and I want to install them by the book. I've done it a bunch of different ways, but I'd like to follow the directions closely um, provided by Prismatic Labs um, and their page. So before we get into that, um, we're going to have to do a little bit of setup, and I'm starting with a blank uh, Ubuntu 18.04 issue. I'm sorry, I was typing the... Um, <laughs> it's hard for me to type and think at the same time. Um, so a blank Ubuntu 18.04.04. Uh, this is the latest update. I haven't run uh, any updates to it, um, but I do suggest that before you start. So uh, to begin with, you in order to follow their instructions, you need to install Docker, and that's difficult for some people. I've been through these directions 10 times to find the easiest way to install everything, and that's what I want to share with you now. So the first thing we need to do is um, get our user in the Docker group, which doesn't currently exist. So we create the group, and then we add our user. Um, you can type this just like you see it. You can copy it from the instructions below, um, or you can um, just substitute. Like right here, that would actually just be your username. Um, but anyway, you can get these commands. They will be in the, in the text below. After you create this group, uh, you need to restart. So I'm going to reboot. It should take just a second for this to come back up. And so I've been playing with this client for months and months. And I always do it. I, I end up doing things the most difficult way possible. And after toying with this, I was like, oh, I really should just find an easy way. And the easy way has been in front of my face the entire time. It's right there in the Prismatic Lab instructions. So now you can see I'm a part of the Docker group. And now I can go ahead and install Docker and be a part of it. Anyone who uses Docker will tell you never use the Snap or the uh, provided repositories always installed directly from Docker. I believe that, um, and that's how I roll myself, but because I'm trying to simplify things, um, I'm not really trying to uh, download sources and install from there. And I know this works, because uh, I've done it a couple times. And I need to install a browser. Uh, other than Firefox, uh, Chromium browser is provided. It's, it's just an open source version of Google Chrome browser, um, and it works really well with Prismatic Labs. The last time I tried Firefox, it just doesn't didn't work, so I haven't uh, haven't tried again. So now that I've got Chromium browser uh, installed, I can open it, and I'm going to go ahead and attach it to favorites while I'm here. Uh, I need to install some updates, but we'll worry about that later. All right, so now that I've got um, Chrome, I can, or, yeah Chrome installed Chromium, I can install MetaMask. So MetaMask is now installed. That was simple. And to get started with MetaMask, um, you can do this any way that works for you. Uh, I'm going to import a wallet just because I've already created one. Um, I would prefer that you didn't use the wallet that I'm using, but I won't stop you. And now that I have a MetaMask, I'm actually going to going to import a different key. Um, you're probably not going to do it this way. I hope that you're going to go to a faucet and get um, get some girly ETH, and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. So right now I'm on the main Ethereum network, but I want to switch to the girly test network. Um, now, they suggest that you use the Prismatic Labs um, node for this, but I found out that just by selecting the network from the MetaMask dropdown, it works just fine. Uh, and so I've imported a key that has 10.5 girly ETH. Um, but let me show you how to get ETH, girly ETH. Go to this site, uh, Fawcett Girly Muddit Blog. And what you'll need to do is go over to Twitter and paste in your, um, only your, your, your wallet address into, uh, 
and do a tweet. A tweet. So send that tweet and then copy a link to that tweet and then come back here, um, paste it there and choose 6.25 ether. I can't do that again because I've exhausted my supply. Um, but that takes really two or three seconds and you'll get some enough girly ETH to start a validator. So right now we have MetaMask open, we have Ethereum, we're connected to the girly test network. Um, we've got Docker installed and now we're ready to go to prylabs.net, participate and follow their instructions. All right, so they're looking for you to already have uh, Docker installed, which we do. I'm trying to figure out my order of pages here. How do I get this showing up best? Let's slide this over here. Okay, that should work out. Um, and so we're really just gonna copy these commands first. These are just downloading the images. Um, I'm using Control C here and Control Shift V over here. Um, if you're pasting into a Ubuntu terminal, you have to use Control Shift V, Control Shift V. And so I'm just downloading the images and in the later instructions, it's gonna tell me how to start those. All right, so I've got that. Now I've already got MetaMask up. It's already connected to Gurley. Uh, I just connected here and we are set. It knows my address. It knows I have 10.5 Gurley ETH and I'll need 3.2 to start a validator. Uh, now I'm gonna use a Docker command to create um, some transaction data. So I just copy that, paste it in. It's gonna send me a some output. All right, and just for the sake of why not, let's go ahead and cop and paste that. I won't need it later, uh, but it doesn't hurt to, to just keep a, a record of it. So I've got that there, and what I really need to do is paste it in this window. So I use this Docker script to create this wallet. I'm sorry, this raw transaction data. This raw transaction data goes gets pasted here. And now it's gonna tell me to start my Beacon Chain and Validator clients. And so two terminals. When I'm in this terminal, if I wanna open another one, I just type Control Shift T, it's gonna open another terminal. And instead of just copying this outright, I wanna modify it. So let me see if I can get a screen here. Um, because what I want to happen is I want it to uh, relaunch when I, <laughs> I'm gonna mess a screen. Um, I want it to relaunch when I restart the computer. And to do that, in here I add dash dash restart space always. And that tells the Docker container to relaunch every time the computer is rebooted. And then I can copy that and paste it in my first terminal. And it's going to start running. So the beacon chain is beginning to run. Now I'm gonna type Control Shift T again to open up a new terminal. And let's start the validator. Now the keys for the validator have already been generated. Um, that was what that was what the first thing did up here with the um, transaction, the raw data. And so here I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna slip in between the IT and the V, I'm gonna do a dash dash restart space always. And that's actually in the notes too, include restart always. Um, just make sure you get it in the right place. So I'm gonna copy all of this and paste it into the terminal, control shift V. All right, so that is launching the validator. Um, so let's go over the steps we've completed. Uh, well, obviously, first off, we installed um, Docker and Chromium. Um, after we installed Chromium, we added MetaMask, we switched to the to the Gurley testnet, um, and then we got some testnet either. Um, then we went to Prismatic Labs and we began their series of instructions. Um, we connected MetaMask to Prismatic Labs. We generated a key, uh, and we'll sh I'll talk about where those keys are in just a second. Um, and then it told us how to launch our um, beacon chain here and our validator here. So those are running. They're running in Docker sessions and they're because we use restart always, 
when we reboot the computer, they're going to come back up automatically. Now, if we want to get out of here, um, we can leave the session running by holding Control P and then Q, and it exits the session. But it's still there, and we can see it with Docker PS. So it's still running. We're just not attached to it. Um, and so we can actually reattach with, so I just left the beacon chain, so we can reattach with docker attach. And we're using, it's, my stuff's all spaced wrong, but we're using this container ID to reattach. Let's see if I can get it by itself, a little bit. Container ID, these are container IDs, and I can just type bo5 and it will, uh, as a matter of fact, you can use the minimum of significance. So I bet I could just do B and it would attach to that. Um, I'm panicking now because it's not, and I'm not sure why. Yeah, okay, so it just took a minute for it to reattach. Um, and, oh, I accidentally attached to the validator. I meant to attach to the beacon chain. I typed B for the validator instead of 9 for the beacon chain. So I can do Control P and Q to get back out. Now if I want to see the validator, I can just do... And yours will not be the same digit. Um, your comp your Docker um, process is going to be different. And I'm going to get out of this again with PQ, Control PQ. Okay, so we have everything running. Um, the last thing we need to do is send a validator deposit. Everything is already set up for this. Um, MetaMask is set up, and if we just hit Make Deposit, uh, it's and confirm it, it's going to send. And what we'll be able to see is if we look at the validator, it's going to show us that, um, Fokker, that the, oh, it's full of it tonight, that the um, deposit has been received. And that should happen in just a minute. Let me see if I can connect. Docker attach. Um, so it'll take a minute and then it should start showing us the validator. Oh, so there's no validator output at the moment because it, it's um, only a few, it's a, a little bit of data every few minutes. Um, and the validator data won't show up until the beacon ch chain uh, is synced and that's going to be 23 hours. Um, so really, I, I need to let you know the smart thing to do is to completely let your beacon chain sync. Uh, and the validator can run in the background, but what what you shouldn't do is send this deposit until the beacon chain is fully synced, because what's going to happen is um, you're going to send that deposit and you're going to be um, accepted as a validator, but your validator isn't really ready to run yet. It's not ready to run until the beacon chain is synced, um, so you would just want to wait until you got there. Uh, the last thing I want to show, sorry, I was doing a joke. The last thing I want to show you is using um, it's getting listed on ETH2 stats. Uh, and that's actually very easy. So right now, uh, we've got everything done, but we're not listed anywhere. Let's get listed on ETH2Stats. To do that, we go to ETH2Stats.io. And we want to look down here at Add Your Node. And scroll down to this Prismatic Sapphire testnet. Copy this bit of text. And we want to do some edits to this also. So. Sorry, this is for another system. Let's. I'm using Control T to open a new tab and paste that in. Let's see what we want to change. Is your Prism node? We want to do Superfiz Docker. And now we need to do is copy this. You can see it already has Restart Always on it. Copy this and paste it to a terminal, and uh, it's going to download the image and it's going to start. Um, East two stats and you can see now we have three services running um, that's ETH2 stats we have the validator and we have the beacon chain now when we go back to ETH2 stats we'll be able to find that probably listed near the bottom super fizz docker right there and it is syncing and so that's a great way to monitor your progress uh, so as long as you uh, keep this computer running, if you reboot it, it's gonna. Those three processes are always going to run in the background. Um, the only thing I would do differently, if I were you, is I would wait until the beacon chain is fully synced before sending that uh, that deposit. 
but honestly it doesn't really matter in the test net you're gonna lose a little bit of, of eth through leakage but in a day or so everything should sync up and you should be fine all right i hope that worked out for you um hope it worked yeah so I just wrapped up this video and realized <clears throat> I didn't really talk about uh, managing your keys or seeing your keys. So I want to show that to you really quickly. Um, the keys for this are stored in the Prism directory. So if I go from home, uh, CD Prism, um, you can see a couple things here. They are the shard withdrawal key. Let's do it this long. Uh, the shard withdrawal key and the validator private key. Now when we go live on the real network, you're going to take this key offline and save it carefully. Um, but oh, I'm sorry, forgive me. The shard withdrawal key you're going to take offline and save carefully, but the validator private key remains online for staking. Um, now, what you want to do is you want to be able to see your progress um, on some of these monitors like Beacon Chain um, and Etherscan. And to do that, we can get the full key from um, viewing that file. Let's do that. And that's going to show us, if I know my password, that's going to show us here under public key um, what we need to copy and paste. So we're going to take this string right here and copy. And let's put it somewhere safe. I'm going to, actually the best place is just to paste it to the end of these two lines and that'll take us right where we're going, I believe. Um, so. Uh, if I go to beaconchain.in, I should be able to copy that and uh, let's see what happens if we paste it. Oh, okay, so I did it wrong. Um, I can go to Beacon Chain and type it in the search window and it should come up. Uh, well, and so here's the other thing. It, ha it isn't actually a, it just downloaded, I don't know what happened. It's not actually um, a validator yet. So when it becomes a validator, uh, these pages will be available, but uh, they're not yet. So let's try the same thing on uh, Etherscan. So again, the problem is there's no data to search for. So that, that public key doesn't actually exist yet, yeah. Um, but again, in 24 hours or a couple hours, when that key gets, uh, when that validator gets picked up by the system, uh, your data will show up here. Um, and just as a reminder, to find that, uh, at least for the Docker setup, you go to CD uh, Home Prism and sudo cat uh, validator private key, and you'll be able to see the public key here, and that's the thing you copy and paste. Uh, to search in these two sites, beaconche.in and beacon.etherscan.io. All right, I hope that helped.